In my previous video, I described my desire to add another modulation input to the VCF, but that I had mistaken Ray Wilson's suggested modification as adding this modulation, when in fact it adds another input. If you have not seen the previous video about mods to the Music from Outer Space Noise Toaster, then I suggest that you pause the video here and watch that video first to understand what I'm referring to. The link can be found in the description below. In this video, I want to quickly describe how you can take the section of Ray's design for modulation of the VCF and duplicate it and connect it to the resonance control of the filter for an interesting effect. Because of the very simple, straightforward design of this filter, the modification only requires seven additional parts be added to the circuit. But also, because of the simple design, our additional modification will not be isolated to just the resonance. It will modulate the cutoff frequency as well. But since this circuit is literally a noise box and not an instrument trying to track precise volt per octave control, the effect is satisfactory for my purposes. Looking at this section of Ray's schematic, we see the components that make up the modulation voltage control. In the previous video, I exchanged this switch for two separate jacks so that we could have two simultaneous inputs. I've already added the additional jack, potentiometer, and 27k resistor between pin 3 and battery negative to the faceplate. For this video, we're going to focus on these four resistors and this transistor. We're going to duplicate this section in the kludge area, and instead of connecting it to X9, the input of the cutoff frequency, we are going to connect it to X10, the input of the resonance. Because the cutoff and resonance are chained together in this circuit in this fashion, this will cause our new modulation to modulate the resonance and the cutoff together. These four resistors, R39, 40, 44, and 45, bias our input to the gate of our transistor and modulate it within the transistor's resistive range. I've noticed over the years when following and adapting Ray's designs that sometimes newer models of the same transistor will have a slightly different resistive range. What I mean by this is that a transistor will function as a voltage controllable resistor only for a small range of voltages applied to the gate. If you exceed this voltage, the transistor simply acts like a on and off switch instead of gradually increasing and decreasing resistance. The transistor called for here is the 2N5457. I have found that the BC12 2N5457 works well with the values described in Ray's schematic, but that the BC27 2N5457 does not. I point this out to note that if you are not getting the desired result, you can try to get a different model number of the 2N5457, or you can change the values of the resistors R44 and 45 to see if you can find a better range for your specific transistor to work. The current range created by R40, 44, and 45 is from 3.8 to 5.2 volts, or basically plus minus 1.7 volts from our artificial ground of 4.5 volts. This is not actually true because the resistor network of R43, 38, and 39 affect this value as well, but that's beyond the scope of this video, and this is a, enough to understand how to think about it. The thing to remember is that changing R40 will change the overall size of the range, R44 will move the max positive voltage, and R45 will move the minimum negative voltage. With that knowledge and some experimentation, you should be able to dial in the right resistive range for your transistor. The clutch area has connections to both battery positive and battery negative at these two spots. You can test this with a continuity tester between the hole and the trace mark BP and BN respectively to make sure. We've already used battery negative for building our extra VCA, and to make it simpler for myself, I use the top leg of R69, which is also connected to battery negative. So here I'm laying out the components to make sure it'll work before I solder it all together. There is a 100K coming from battery positive and connecting to a 39K coming from our yellow signal wire from the faceplate. Then the junction of these two resistors is connected to the gate of our transistor via another 39K resistor. And finally, a 100K resistor between battery negative and the gate, which will have to share a, the same hole as the 39K resistor. Then the only thing left to do is connect the source pin of our transistor, the middle one, to ground with a wire and connect the drain of the transistor to X10. I'll quickly solder this off camera because it's difficult to move all of this around and make visible views for you to see soldering and it's not that interesting and I'll show you the final layout when I'm done. 
So the end result here is we have our yellow wire here. Wait, no, this one. Our yellow wire is coming through and is connected on the underside of the board here. And then it goes through our 39K resistor. And these two holes are connected. This is our 100K that is coming from the battery positive terminal. Then we have our 39K resistor that is sharing the same hole as our other 39K. That is then connected over to the gate. That is the gate side of our transistor. This is the VCA over here and this is the VCF. This transistor gate also has a 100K that is connected to these two pins here. And then this wire, it's difficult to see. I desoldered this leg of the resistor and stuck both the leg of the resistor and this wire through because this point is battery negative. This point up here is also battery negative, but I already had two resistors soldered in there for the VZA, so it's just difficult for me to get to. So, 100K above battery negative, 39K to the junction, then 100K to the battery positive, 39K, and then this is our signal input there, coming from our modulation source that is coming from the faceplate, from this potentiometer that we had done in the previous video, that is our extra modulation. Then the source middle pin is connected over to this green wire to the extra ground point. And the drain is simply connected over here. I laid it flat and connected to X10. So now let's look and listen to our circuit here. Uh, if we turn both of these modulations down, make sure that all of that modulation is down. Hopefully we just get the sound of our oscillator. Once it warms up. A little bit shaky as always, because it just is. Okay, so when we look at our cutoff frequency, and we can see that it is hardwired the AR envelope here and so when we start to increase this It is affecting the cutoff frequency to a certain degree, but you can see that it is pumping through the resonance first while it does that. This is the normal modulation. If we turn this up, it won't start to affect it until it's about halfway up. But the LFO running through it... Oh, we've got the LFO going.
The input won't affect it if the, it's up that high. And there you have it. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'll upload the full demonstration video. It goes on for another three or four minutes, uh, but I'm going to cut it there for time for this video. Uh, if you're interested, I'll put the uh, link in the description. All right, enjoy.